Hello, I'm Jay, owner of Volunteer Audio. Uh, if you watched our last video, we went over the new Rockford Fosgate HD Audio by Rockford factory Harley audio system. This would be the one that comes in your CVO or something that could be added on now at the dealer. The reason we went over all this is I wanted you to understand the system and some of the challenges that would be faced if we did an upgrade to it. So we keep getting calls from people. They've got these beautiful boxes. They've done all this work to it and the audio system's just very lacking. And they wanna know, can we fix it? Can we fix it right? And at Volunteer Audio, we're not gonna do it unless we do it the right way. So I wanted to make a video step-by-step -step showing you how to do this and explaining the components that we have uh, and all the steps we did to make sure this is done the very best to the best of our ability. So hang out and watch the rest of the video. So I've got our parts laid out. I want to go over some of the challenges you face uh, when you're going to wire this up. So I've got something right here nobody else has yet. We've already pinned out, tested, and we've built a bypass harness. So this is similar to the CVO Boom 2 bypass harness. It's a different plug inside of it's different and the pin layout is different. But at Volunteer Audio, we've already made them. I've already used them. I've had a bike ride around six months with one of these already installed and working. But I want to tell you what exactly this is doing. So we're gonna take the factory Rockford amp, I'm gonna unbolt it out of the bike, and I'm gonna plug this in place. That is gonna take our front radio signal, and it's just gonna jumper it to the lids so we no longer have an amp there. That allows me to do this, and I'm very happy this came out when it did. We have the new Precision Power. It's an 800 watt four channel amplifier that's gonna bolt right in the fairing of the CVO we're working on. So this is a CVO road glide. This is gonna be mounted on this road glide bracket under the radio behind the headlight and that frees up that bag space so there's no amp there. Uh, it also does something else. So we actually, this has got the plug and play harness setup that comes from Precision Power for 14 and newer Harley. Now at Volunteer Audio, we're gonna offer this in an HD Audio by Rockford upgrade package and we do some very specific things. So you'll notice these two leads, these are gonna connect to our front speaker pods. These are not on the normal plug and play package and we do this for a reason. From the factory, the front speaker level of the radio is feeding the Rockford amp. It has no rear wires run to it whatsoever. So if we want to continue to use all four channels of our amp, we're actually taking the front channel off the radio. We're now running it to our front pods through these connectors. We're using the rear of the radio to feed and jumper over in the back at our speakers. And we've done all that in the wiring here. It's already pre-wired by us already set the gains and the filters and everything specifically for the GTS radio with a, a flash. We're gonna use a Boom Audio six speaker two amp flash. We'll get to that in a few minutes. But by simply plugging these in the front, plugging this in behind the radio. So this is what plugs into your factory radio. Factory harness plugs in here. Running power and ground back to the battery and plugging this remote turn on into a factory lead that's already in the fairing. We have completely bypassed the Rockford system. We've not cut any factory wiring and we've made sure this is gonna be a lot more power. So the original amp is 400 watts, this one is 800 watts. Now, why do we need all that power? We're going to be putting in the Hertz SPL Show Neo Series. So we're going from the five by seven in the back. I'll be cutting, modifying, showing you how to install the adapters. Uh, these are the ones specifically for power locks, so we're not gonna lose the lid locks. We're gonna cut and modify and install these SX690 Neos from Hertz. Now this speaker is a 260 watt speaker. It needs 130 watts of RMS power. That's the maximum RMS. And we're gonna be sending a little over 100 watts RMS to it with this amplifier, compared to about 65 RMS with our normal Hertz amp. So this CVO has already got a stage two engine build. It's super high output and this guy loves more power. So we're gonna be throwing an amp on it that has more power while still being under that max RMS so we don't eventually blow up these speakers. Um, the SX165neos that are going in the front are 100 RMS rated and we're sending 100 RMS to them. So perfectly matched for that. And we're gonna make sure all of this is tuned where it, he's got plenty of rear audio and it's very even because anytime you flash your radio, you're gonna lose the ability to fade. So if you do the right flash, you're gonna see the fader, but it's not gonna do anything. For the same reason, uh, Harley was able to run just front signal back to that amp. They actually use a digital CAN data. That's just the, the computer area network. They use a CAN 
signal. So when you fade the stock radio, it actually gains the front and the rear of the amp up. Now we're not, we don't have that ability with an aftermarket amp. So you're gonna lose fader, but who fades it once you get it set right? So we'll do all that with the gains on the amplifier. So hang out, here we go. We're fixing to take this bike apart. I'm gonna start, we're gonna remove the Rockford speakers. We're gonna remove the Rockford amp, and then we'll start disassembly of the bike. So let's get to work. All right, so in our last video, I already removed the, the front and rear grills. I'm gonna show you how to do this on the passenger side. Just wanna take what's called a non-marring pry tool. So that's a tool that's basically made out of plastic. It won't scratch your paint. We're gonna bring it down between the grill and the painted body. And then you're just gonna slightly pry outward. There's just a couple pressure fit clips on this side. Hear them release. All right, so just two clips on this one end. The other part just slides in behind. We'll go ahead and take our T20 Torx and remove the screws out of both speakers. So on a road glide, you can do this without having to remove the pods. If this was a street glide, you wouldn't have access to these screws. We're also gonna have access to the front fairing screws. There's one on each side that we're about to take out before we get our fairing off here. Now when you go to take the speaker out, it's going to seem like it won't come unless you twist it to the right angle. So as it's twisted, it fits. As it's not twisted, it doesn't. So I'm just rotating around and it'll come through the hole. Go and unplug your terminals. The larger black terminal is actually the negative. The clear terminal is the positive. Let's go ahead and take our other speaker out. Terminals are very, very tight. Before you put your new speakers in, you want to crimp each one of these a little tighter with a pair of pliers. Make sure they're just as tight on your new speakers. So, all right, so we're going to remove the four silver screws from inside the lid. This is what's holding your grill in place. Again, it's just a T20 Torx. I've got three of them out now. While I take the fourth one out, I'm gonna apply some pressure to this grill so it doesn't just fall off. And we're just gonna lift it off. All right, next, let's remove the screws holding the speaker in. So these are five by seven inch speakers. There's a uh, very few companies making a replacement that's it's really good. The precision power is probably the best at this time for it is to drop in replacement. In this case, we're gonna do a six by nine though instead of a five by seven. So we'll be taking these lids off here shortly and we'll be modifying and cutting this entire shell that you see here out. So we've gotta cut that out and then sand it flush to make sure our six by nine has somewhere to sit. All right, so let's move to the front. We'll go ahead and put our front speakers in. All right, so first step I normally do is I'm gonna take a pair of pliers. These are a pair of needle nose. I'm just gonna squeeze the sides of this so that that terminal's a little tighter. 
It's just going to make sure we don't ever have to pull the speaker back out where it's come unplugged. All right, so our new Hertz speaker is a neodymium speaker, meaning the magnet is very small because it is also very strong. That means we can install them without having to do any modification to the pods. We really feel that if you buy the right components, the install is going to be easier. It's going to sound better. It's going to last longer. Definitely quality is definitely more important than quantity in this case. All right, so let's drop the speaker through the hole, rotate it where it goes. Then we're just going to take those original four screws and put the speaker right back in. reinstall the grills at this time because we still need to access the screw uh, that's down here this one right here to be able to get the fairing off and I'm probably gonna do a little bit of work to these grills later figure out how to get a Hertz logo where it says Rockford Fosgate now all right let's get the other speaker in repeat the same step tighten up our terminals Again, the black one goes to the negative, the clear one goes to the positive. Right. I always want to rotate it around to where your logos are facing correctly. We've got our front speakers in. Next, let's go ahead and remove our fairing, and then we'll remove the seat and the gas tank. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and remove the bottom Torx screw on each side. This is on the inside of this inner fairing. So there's two down here. We're only gonna do the bottom one because the top one doesn't actually secure the fairing in place. Later on, I'm going to be removing these other two screws. I just want to show them to you right now. There's one on each side of the speaker. I normally remove those last. I do that because they hold everything in place real nice as you're removing everything on the other side. So let's go to the other side. We'll remove that. Last step, I'll take those out. All right, so anytime we get to the front, we're working on the fairing. We want to throw us a fender protector over top of our front fender. Now I've actually got the same one they use at the Harley dealers. 
but I would recommend if you don't have this, use a shirt, a towel, something, put something on here so just in case if something falls, it doesn't scratch your front fender or hopefully won't, won't allow it to dent it. Next, we'll take our four screws out, securing our windshield. Sometimes these are Allen heads, sometimes they're Phillips heads, sometimes they're Torx heads. So just see what fits yours. In this case, we've got a 1 8 Allen head screw. And I'll remove these. Another great thing to do, we've got these little clear storage trays. Uh, we bought ours at Home Depot. We can pick them up a little bit anywhere. And we just put all of our screws in little separate compartments as we go. And it keeps you from getting confused as to where they go later because they're all kept in the right order. It also allows you to see when you get done if you forgot to put any of them back. So you never get finished and then realize you didn't put a bolt in. I'm going to loosen both of these and I'm going to lift the windshield out. Once we have those done, you can really just lift from under here and unsnap that original panel. Just got some push clips in it. Let's see if we can get our fingers under it. And lift it all the way up. All right, so it's just two push clips underneath. And got that off. All right, so while you're in here, go ahead and disconnect your front marker lights. Looks like this one's got a few added lights, but we're just gonna plug the connector on each side. And next, at the back of each one of your marker lights, there's an Allen head. You take those out. This one has been changed in size. What have they done? Uh, So it's pretty common to see people actually take the screw that used to be below the speaker pod and move it out here because it's black. And uh, originally these would have been a chrome screw. All right, so I've got the side bolts out. Everything's disconnected. All that's left now is to remove the screw on each side of the speaker. We'll go ahead and take this one out. And then we'll have one on the other side. I always take these out last because there's no way the fairing can fall if they're still in. And I like to just use my body to put a little pressure on the front. So I take the last one out. So after that last screw's out, fairing simply just pulls forward and it'll come loose just like that all right so this is a CVO and we're gonna see that it's got a hidden antenna mounted on the back of the headlight we're gonna get that loose because next step is we're gonna go ahead and pull the headlight all the way out all right, so let's go ahead and pop these two clips out of the back of the headlight let's leave our antenna in place Now, if this was a non-CVO, right here is where the rear speaker connector would have been. It would have been right here, secured to this plate. But on the CVO, since it has factory rear speakers, those harnesses are not in the fairing. Four Allen heads that hold the headlight in, two across the bottom, two across the top. Uh, they are a 3 16 in size. Alright, 
So this particular headlight has some additional lights on the side of it. So we're gonna have to feed that wiring back down. Temporarily put one of these back in while I cut the zip ties loose. So we're free from the lights. We'll take our headlight out, set it to the side as well. All right, so underneath this factory radio, there is nothing there. There are times I've seen a CB module or something else installed. It being a CVO, I kind of expected maybe there'd be a uh, telematics module or CB or WIM or something in there and there's nothing in the way, which is great. So our amp's gonna go right where it needs to. I'm gonna go ahead and take the radio out. This isn't really required, but it makes it easier for you to see what I'm doing. It makes it a little easier for me to see what I'm doing as well as I'm bolting in our amp plates. We're gonna flip the, uh, the main wiring harness. There's a little lever on it with a little lock. You just push in, flip it over, it's gonna unlock it, unplug it. We'll take a pair of pliers and undo our USB. So this is the factory USB up here at the top. Let's push that black plug. Also we're going to undo the antenna, AM, FM, and then GPS. All these have little push clips. You just push the right place and then they come undone. So just four more 3 16 bolts holding the radio on at this point and we'll take it out. All right, so we've got it unbolted. Now we're just gonna lift it out. Just so gonna set that GTS radio aside. We definitely don't wanna drop it. Things are pretty expensive and hard to get. All right, so that opened us up where we've got a really good view of this area underneath the radio. So we're simply gonna bring our amp over. We're gonna see if we can fish it up in here and get it bolted in. All right, so now that we have our amp on our bracket, we're gonna slide it all the way up through here. Just kind of lift the wires up out of your way. Pay attention. You don't get anything kind of pinched or stuck in between. All right, looks like we've got plenty of room for our screen to fit. I'll put our bolts here in the back. So you got these little bolts. They're either a 5 16 or an 8 millimeter. Start those securing it in. Now this is going to have you where you're looking right at all the adjustments on the amplifier. Please don't change any of them unless you talk to us and we tell you to do so. 
the amp is completely set up when we ship it to you. As long as we know what radio you're using and you do the flash that we recommend, everything is going to be completely preset. Now, you only flash the radio if you're using a stock radio. If you've decided to use that Soundstream HDHU14, uh, we're just going to have it completely set up for that radio and there's no need to flash anything either. So we're going to, we used a CC1, which is a calibration machine for your crossovers. And we've already set all the crossovers. We've used a DD1 and we've set all your gains so that when you get it, you don't have to rent any tools. You don't have to be a genius at this. You just have to be mechanically inclined enough to follow my video and install it. Again, this is the uh, amp that we've built for the HD audio by Rockford. So that's just some changes in the wiring. There are some changes in the settings we've done and uh, preset for that. But it'll say, say you had a road glide and you didn't have the HD audio by Rockford, which is good for you because that means we're not redoing something you've already paid a lot of money for. It's going to go in the same way with the exception of just a few different steps as we do the wiring. Like you won't be bypassing a factory amp and you'll be using the factory connectors at the front pods. And I'll go back over those as we connect them up. But as you can see, this is a pretty simple install. Very, very nice harnessing that they've made for us. Looks very factory. All right, so I've got us tight. All right, at this point, I want you to pay attention to a few things. So we have our amp remote wire. It's gonna be the blue one with the white connector. I want you to pull it toward the front, fish it around the existing cables. And once you've done that, pull it over here to the side and you're gonna see, actually let's go to the other side on this one because this one has the, a cigarette lighter plugged in there. So on this side, you're gonna see a, a connector it's going to have a little black block off in it. We're just going to unplug that. We're going to plug in our amp turn on wire. So no splicing, all factory connections. Now that that's done, I'm going to go and set our radio back in and bolt it in. Just want to make sure our wiring is clear. is a really tight fix. We're using all the space to put this big amp. So we're going to line up all of our screws and you're going to see it's going to push down on that wiring just a little bit, but that is fine. It's not going to hurt anything. Get everything lined back up. I love having the amp under the radio. It's such a better place because now it's not taking up any usable room. You were not using that space for anything else. And if you want to remove the cover and the amp bracket and all the things in the bag where this is an HD Audio by Rockford, you're going to have that extra space back. If you don't have HD Audio by Rockford, well, you never wasted any space in the bag, so even better. So our radio is back mounted in. So let's look at our harness again. So this is our new radio harness. We're going to take the end that left the amp. And we're going to plug it in, just like the factory connector was. Spin this over. And then we're going to take our original connector and plug in the other set of our T harness. So this is very, very simple. And just like that, you have wired your amp in to your radio. Now I'm going to tuck this wiring up underneath the amp and behind the headlight. It's going to have plenty of room here for everything. It's going to look a lot cleaner too. Uh, also on this particular build, because this is HD audio by Rockford, I want to reiterate this. You're not going to have these two connectors if you have a non-Rockford uh, non system. We're not going to include these because you don't need them. Simply plugging this in is going to connect the front and the rear speaker output. If you don't have factory rear speakers, there's going to be a connector right up here Actually, at this bracket hooked to it, that is your rear speaker connector, and you're going to run a backbone harness back.
But in this case, because of the weird way that they wired up the factory Rockford amp, we added you two new front connectors. So the white wiring is going to be the left, the gray wiring is going to be the right, and all we're going to do is unplug our front speaker pod and we're going to plug this one in instead. So that easy, we've made front connections all plug and play. We haven't cut anything, we've not modified anything. So if you're under warranty, we haven't voided it. That's not always a concern, but I'm always concerned to make sure that we do things the absolute best way that they can be done. And I think plugging in to the original connectors is the correct way to do it. Somebody had previously disconnected these. Now they're all plugged back in. All right, so factory connectors, we're just going to let them hang in there. They're not going to anything. They're not hurting anything being there. So don't think about cutting them out or removing them. There's no need. All right, so let's go ahead and plug in our USB back in. Don't forget to plug in your GPS antenna and your FM antenna. I'm going to plug the FM antenna last just because we're going to put the headlight in and it's going to mount back on top of that then. All right, so next we're going to go ahead and remove the gas tank so I can prep you for doing, we're going to pull this power and ground wire back to the battery. All right, so let's go ahead and get our seat off. This particular one just has a thumb screw on the back, so we're going to remove it. And then we'll remove the rear portion of the seat. Now we've got two more thumb screws for the main seat. Now these are nice. This is a really nice seat. And I would suggest if you've got a seat that is very nice and sought after, especially when it says CVO, that you put some locks on them. So Robert Becker Designs, we've got them on our website. They actually have a seat replacement bolt that locks, makes it where nobody can steal your seat. Seems to be a big issue when you go to rallies. Somebody sees a seat they locked and then they want to just take it. All right, so our seat is off. This being a, a 21, it doesn't have a vent on this side. If you had an older bike, there's going to be a vent that you're just going to pull up on this side. We do have a fuel return. And if we follow here, we're going to see our fuel sending unit. We're going to unplug that. All right, so we're going to have four 13 millimeter bolts, two at the back of the gas tank, one on each side at the front to remove. The front ones are going to be under these little rubber caps. Come around here and I'll show you how to disconnect the quick disconnect fuel line. All right, so on your newer Harleys, 14 and newer, this is the type of fuel release. I love it because the older Harleys had crossover tubes and you had to pretty much drain the gas tank. They were very difficult, but the new ones are very simple. So you just take your quick disconnect line here, slide the silver collar up, see if I can get it to slide up, and then pull the line down. Once it does, it automatically cuts the fuel off. You'll get just a few drips here, which is why I've got this towel here to keep stuff off the motor. But then it should quit running. So that simple, you've disconnected the fuel and we're ready to set the tank off. All right, so now we've got our four bolts out. We've disconnected the fuel line and back here we've disconnected what was, what was hooked up. So let's just set it off. All right, so now that our tank's off, we're gonna remove the cover for the backbone harness. On this bike, we're doing this so that we can run power and ground back to the battery. Uh, if you have a non-HD by Rockford bike, you would also want to do this to be able to run your rear speaker wires back. Some places think it's okay to run them under the edge of the gas tank. I think we ought to run them exactly where Harley put them. It's going to be the best place for them long term. It's a little piece of tape we just cut on each side. Slide these brake lines out. All right. So I've got our wire kind of pulled out here, and I just did this the hard way. I would advise you to do it the easy way. So we're going to you run the wire from that side to this way, but with this big fuse holder on it, 
You could just unplug it from the amp, feed it through before you put your amp in. I would say it's gonna be easier on you. But I always like doing things the hard way. So I pulled the whole fuse holder through here. It is possible. You can pull it through, but we're gonna pull this on through. It's gonna lay right here in our backbone. We're gonna secure it up here with a zip tie, snap this back on and connect it to the battery. Nothing else has to be run to the rear on this bike because it's the HD Audio by Rockford. But if you had a non-boom or non-HD Audio by Rockford, you would just run your rear speaker wires back and that's gonna be just a plug-in connector. So let's get it secured and get our cover back on. All right, so I'm gonna take a zip tie and I'm gonna put it around here in the front. Push all of this down in here, and we're gonna snap that cover back on. So our cover's back in place. All of our wires are snapped back in and where they need to be so they're all protected as far as our brake lines and such. Let's set the gas tank back on. All right, let's get our bolts back in. Now you wanna start all four of these bolts before you tighten them down. It does allow it to move a little bit forward and backwards. I just want to make sure your front ones line up well. All right, they all line up, so I'm going to tighten them up. So don't forget to put your little plastic caps back on the front. This covers the bolts on this one, you couldn't see it, but if you take it off, you need to put it back on. All right, they just stick over, they're in. I'm gonna hook up my fuel return line. I'm not gonna plug in my fuel sender yet because we're fixing to take the battery tray off. I'll plug that in at the end. I'm gonna slide a couple gloves on, hook my fuel line back up. Fuel line goes back on just like it came off. You just simply push that little sleeve up, push the fuel line in, it's gonna lock into place, and you're reconnected. If you get done with the job and you're at the end and the bike doesn't start, probably forgot to hook the fuel line back up. It's happened to the best of us. Luckily, it's a very easy fix if you do find out that you've done that. All right, so battery tray next. Let's go ahead and remove the two bolts at the rear of the battery tray. Let's see what we've got here. So we have an extra connector wasn't connected to anything when we started. Good to always see that so that you don't do it. Looks like somebody's probably added on some lights and that's just an extra. Pull this loose. Unplug here. Put our PCM up and out of the way. All right, 
So once we get all that undone, we can take the battery tray off the battery, and the cover off the top of the battery. Now I had removed the fuse earlier as I was routing everything, so I'm gonna put the fuse back in. It is a 60 amp fuse, because this is eight gauge power wire. So this is a very large copper setup. Normally I'll put a zip tie around this when I'm done. Just make sure no way in the world does it come undone. couple of zip ties here that I'm going to cut loose just to make better, better way for our harness to be routed. Start with that one. I think that might be the only one I need. There's some extra lights have been added, so there's some extra controllers in the way. We're going to fight around those. We're going to let our fuse holder just kind of hang out here in front of the battery. Let's take you a big Phillips screw screwdriver. Should be able to undo this post. All right, so our positive is connected. It's good and tight. I'm gonna finish routing this wire where I want it. Make sure that our cover goes back on easily here in a few minutes. All right, so now we have our negative to hook up. We always run it all the way back to the battery. I see sometimes people wanna connect it to the frame. If, you, if you're gonna do this, go all the way to the battery. It's gonna give you less ground noise, less floor noise. Anytime you're using a big amplifier, you're magnifying some electrical noises that are already in the system. And we wanna make sure that we keep the signal as clean as possible. I think the harness is built really well and we're going high level in, so it should limit that greatly anyways. So that's good and tight. Let's see if we can get our cover back on now. Normally they don't have this much extra wiring because they don't have these added on lights. All right, we're getting a little closer now. Now let's just put everything back where it was before we remove that. First, we're going to snap our computer in. It's kind of the most important thing to get where it goes first. All right, plug this connector in. And now we can go ahead and put the uh, fuel sender connect it back up along with the original lighting connector and we're back together you can't tell that we've done this it looks just like it did from the factory other than these additional parts someone else has installed So that is done. Let's go back up to the front. We'll do a little bit of wire tidying up. I want to leave this all undone though. I'm not going to put the fairing back on until we're completely done because after I get the six by nines installed 
and I flash the radio, I'm gonna set the gains on the amp, we're gonna document that on our end so we have that for you in the future. Uh, so if you buy the amp and you need the specs, we'll have it. But if you buy it from us and we know what radio you're doing, or you buy it and a radio from us, we'll already have all of these preset when it ships out. All right, so next step, we're going to tape off the top of this bag. That's just to protect it, because the next step takes a little while, and we're gonna be cutting this plastic out that is this kind of shell that's under the speaker. So I'll tell you why that shell is there. So Rockford Fosgate has had some issues where the back of the speaker gets so hot, they're sending a lot of power to it. It's sealed in the bag. There's no way for that heat to escape. The back of the speaker will generate enough heat that it could actually damage some of your goods. So they put this cover in here to keep your bags or uh, your jacket or your shirt, whatever you may have in your bag, from touching the back of the speaker. So um, we are not gonna need that. We're using a, a neodymium speaker made by Hertz in this install. And it is a very, very well-built speaker with a large enough magnet that it doesn't generate that much heat. If you were going back with 5x7s, we would suggest doing the Precision Power 5x7s. And they've got this great technology where they moved the magnet to the tweeter. It's actually on the pole piece. It holds the tweeter. It's got an aluminum heat sink. And it got the heat from inside the bag to outside of the bag. So as wind's going over this grill, it's actually cooling that speaker to keep it from overheating. The same thing is going on with their 6 by 9s I love the design. It takes less room in the bag and it gets that heat out where it can be cooled easier. This particular customer has listened to all of our Hertz videos, is really, really uh, happy with the way they sound and wants that same sound in his bike. So let me get taping on this lid and then we'll get the lid off and we're gonna actually cut all this over on a router table. Uh, we're not gonna use the router table for anything more than to just hold it though. No need to router this. Say, this is just for paint protection's sake. We don't want to scratch anything during the process. Beautiful bike, and we're gonna make sure it stays that way. doesn't have to be perfect, it's just there to protect it during this process. So that should be pretty sufficient for what we're gonna do. I may add a little bit more when we get it over on the table. But next, we're gonna open it up. I'm gonna remove the two screws here. Actually, I'm gonna remove the hinge screws in here and disconnect all this harnessing so we can take the lid off. All right, first we're gonna go ahead and remove the, the cloth. The screws that hold this cloth in place. We're gonna do that so we can get access to all of this wiring. So we've already disconnected the wiring that goes to the speaker. But this one, because it's a CVO, has power lid locks. I'm gonna disconnect that. And now our wiring is no longer connected to our lid. Let's remove the last two screws. Now once you've took that cloth loose, don't let it hang too far, it could scratch the side of the bag. All right, let's move over to our table. All right, so I've got our lid off. It's over here on the table. I'm gonna go ahead and finish removing this cloth kind of bag holder. This is what keeps the lid from opening too far. It's kind of a stop, I guess you'd say. We'll get it all the way off. Now you're gonna see underneath here, you're gonna see we have our power uh, lid mechanism to, to do the locks on the lid. So all that does is open and close that. I'm gonna lay another piece of tape here we're gonna flip it over on the front, and on this table I've got a towel. So we've taped the painted surface, we're sitting on a towel, and the reason it's taped, even though we're on a towel, is we're gonna be cutting this plastic little pieces that are gonna get in that towel, and I just don't want it to scratch it up any, any, any at all. So, um, let's grab our tools. What I'm gonna to be using is a multi-tool. 
uh, to cut through this plastic. Once I get it cut really close, then I'm going to sand it smooth and we're going to kind of finish it out. So, uh, yep, that's what we're doing. Let's get it off here. Let's put a little piece of tape here. There's really no risk of it getting damaged or hurt, but we're going to make for sure of it. All right, so I've done this many, many times before, and let's see if I can get it at an angle. That might actually make this easier for you to see. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this multi-tool and from out here, I'm gonna cut down about a quarter of an inch all the way around and get this shell off of there. Once I get it removed, then we'll do a little bit more trimming and we should be able to sand it. All things go as planned. And I'm gonna film this one. Once we get it done, I'll just do the other one off camera because I'm kind of running out of time and I wanna be able to show you the rest of this build. So I've cut the perimeter. Now we're going to flip it over and you're going to see on this side, I know it's kind of difficult to see, but we have to cut all the way through these original pieces of plastic that the screws for the grill went in. Now this, this is pretty well loose, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut straight down at each one and we'll go on the other side and cut the rest of the way through. And you want to be really careful as you cut through this because this is the outside of the bag and we don't want to go through there. So we're going to take our time and we're going to go kind of easy with it. flip it over and I'm going to finish going through this back portion here. All right. I'm basically just going to kind of pry off what little bit is left. Get it out where I can see exactly what needs to be cut. And there we go. All right, so I leave some excess all the way around. You're gonna see it looks kind of nasty right now because this plastic melts as you cut it. So I'm gonna cut it just a little bit more. 
Gonna clean up a little bit of this mess and then I'll take a sander and we'll sand it smooth. All right, so basically I cut it a little, uh, left a little on here. So that now from this side, I can cut it a little further. I really wanna get this as smooth as we can get. Now don't really worry too much about it. All of this is hidden, all of this is covered. You'll see that when we get done, but I'm still a little OCD. So I wanna get it as, as perfect as I can. Now you see I'm just cutting it a lot closer so that it won't take long to sand it down. Now this is a CVO lid, so it does have power lid locks. If you've had a set of boom lids that were added on, uh, this exact same adapter setup works and you do the same method, but this just won't be here. Uh, and it's gonna be a little closer when you mount your speaker because we're not gonna have to try to clear for this. Let's keep cutting it. <laughs> So I've got this done. Now you'll see as you, as you do this, this plastic gets hot, kind of melts. It leaves some little edges that will as it cools down, just kind of flake off. So I'm going to go ahead and vacuum up the large chunks again, and we're going to get the sander on here and prep it to do the next part. All right, so we've got it cut down to what I feel is close enough to sand. It's not going to take long. I'm going to take my, my DA I've got. Now, I'm going to tell you, I'm showing you how that I do this. There are many ways you could cut this off. There are multiple types of saws that could be used. This is just what I've found that I like to use. Uh, there's less likelihood of me messing something up. And the sander is going to allow me to get this good and smooth. So when I put our next part on, that it seals watertight. We really don't want water to leak in the bags. So let's get it sanded. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
right, I think that's gonna be sufficient. So as you see, I've sanded all of these edges down and that's really just to make sure that it's smooth enough that the gasket on the next step will seal and keep water from leaking inside the bag. So we've got a little bit of dust and we'll do a little bit more vacuuming and then we're gonna seal this back together, show you how to put the, the adapter on it. All right, so we're to this point. I'm gonna show you what you get in the kit. Uh, this being the locking lids, it's gonna have a spacer. It's gonna end up installed here. After that, it's gonna be stacked on there, this adapter. That's just tall enough that it clears, as you see, everything related to the locks. Then our six by nine is gonna bolt on. But first, we've gotta put in some hardware to make this work. So these are made by American Hard Bags, and they're gonna send out some, what we call nut certs. They're aluminum, and they're designed for these particular long uh, bolts to go through this adapter through the front. Now they're gonna tell you, and, and I'm gonna tell you the same thing, we're gonna drill out the four existing speaker holes to the size that this fits. Now at that point, they're gonna to say to use a nut cert tool and to crimp this. The issue is, if you notice, we're super close to the edge on a couple of these screw holes, and this is plastic, so when you crimp this and it swells, it tends to split the plastic. So I don't wanna split the plastic. Even though you're not gonna see it and you're not gonna know it, if you're my customer, I wanna make sure I do it the best way I can. So I'm gonna drill the holes, I'm gonna put these in, and then we use a CA glue, it's an instant adhesive and an activator, and I'm going to pull those where they go, and I'm gonna put a little bit of glue around them, I'm gonna hit them with an activator, they're gonna dry, and we're not gonna split any of this plastic up. And then, once we have put our bolts in, it's holding it in place, plus the glue's holding it in place, it can't go anywhere. All we're really doing is making sure this doesn't spin as we try to tighten up our bolts. So I've got a, I think this was a 1730 second, I'm sorry, 1760 force drill bit. It's the correct size for what we're doing. And I'm just gonna drill through each one of these. And if you'll notice, that is very close to the edge of that plastic. If we were to swell this, it does just want to break the plastic. And it should be a very tight fitting hole. May even have to wallow those out just a little bit. Let's see here. Nope, not bad at all. So what we're gonna do is, at this point, what I always do is I go ahead and thread in one of our bolts. Take my CA glue. And you'll notice that there's actually a little bit of room around these. There's room for the glue to clear and for the, this insert to go up in there. So I'm gonna put just a couple dabs of this glue around it. Then while I pull up on it, I spray the adhesive activator. In just a few seconds, it is dry. And it's gonna continue to dry as we do our other ones. So I'm gonna go on and do my next one. Again, just a, just a small amount of this. It doesn't take much because its only job is to keep this bolt or this nut from spinning as we screw into it here in a little while. All right, so see each one of these dries. There's four of them. This is actually a lot easier. It's something you can do without a special tool as well as I think the better way. Pretty much since you're using the original holes as a template, this is a very easy task. It lines up very, very well. They've, uh, I think they've thought through the kit pretty well. Let's put our last insert in for this side. I 
And you don't want to get this on the threads where the bolt goes, or you won't get your bolt out. When it's blowing up so quickly dry, this stuff really evaporates. Keep it from running out on the outside of the lid. And that's one side done. Now we're going to put our gasket that comes with our parts together. And I'm going to pick up a few more pieces of plastic just to make sure we don't have anything here that could hurt anything. All right, next step, it's going to come with this gasket material. You're going to want to apply this all the way around. This is just going to make things watertight. Keep you from getting water in the bags. Or at least as watertight as the original speakers were. Just so want to apply this all the way around the edge. All right, so we got our gasket installed all the way around. Now you're going to see that this is going to fit just perfectly down in the lid, but we still need to gasket our other side. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. These adapters are made by American Hard Bags, but they are available on our website at volunteeraudio.com. They're going to be in the speaker lids and adapter section of the website. If you were to buy a complete kit from us to do this uh, HD audio by Rockford, whether that's a pre-done package or you build it in our package builder, it's going to include this with it. So just make sure you select the option for the 6x8 to 6x9 adapters in that package builder. Then you're going to get this same exact kit. All right, so let me try to get into a position where you can see us a little better. All right, I think we've got a little bit better angle on it here. Let's get a Phillips screwdriver. Which one do I want? I think I want this one. All right, so you'll notice on the back side of this adapter, one of these is actually cut. And it's cut to go on the one that's closest to the outside edge of this lid. All right, so before we put our adapter in place, we're going to go ahead and put the screws back in the grill. So I've put the grill on the other side. I've moved the tape out of the way to make sure we don't have any tape. Keep it held off. Got our grill back in place. Looks good. Now we're going to put our speaker adapter back on. All right, so I've got my adapter lined up with each one of the nut certs. We're going to hand start each one of the screws.
So now that we've got that done, we're gonna take our speaker with our gasket on it. We've added that fetal rubber gasket. We're gonna start all the screws in it next. So you'll notice a lot of times I use hand tools when I've got drills and I could use the drills, but I want to make sure that I can feel how tight it goes while this is going into plastic. We definitely don't want to strip it out. We don't want to break something. And you got a lot more control over that when you do it by hand. But here's our speaker installed. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get it mounted back on the bag. I'm going to do the other bag. Uh, no need in showing you the whole process twice. This took a long time and I don't want to bore you to death. So we'll come back together when we have both of the lids done. But here in a second, I'll let you see me put this one back on and then we'll, uh, then I'll do the other one off camera. All right, so we've got our lid back together. I'm gonna start our screws back. Being real careful to hold this where we hopefully don't drop anything or scratch anything. line up these outside bolts. Now they normally would hold the cloth. I'm going to put them in temporarily just to keep everything in alignment while I tighten the middle two. But I want to get some, some wiring straight before we do the, uh, the cloth. It's much easier to secure it underneath it before. Now that I have all those aligned, I'll top in the middle one. All right. And for now, like I say, I'm gonna leave this loose because as we do our wiring for our speaker, we're gonna secure all of this in here. Factory, it was very, very loose. Uh, and I wanna get it secured in here better. And then we're gonna put this back over it. Actually, you know, we're here. Let's go ahead and do it. We'll go ahead and hook up the speaker wires and we'll get that done. So let me grab my pliers and I'll we'll squeeze those a little tighter. So let's just go ahead and get our wiring done. Squeeze our connectors tighter. It's just so we don't have them fall off later. Again, the, uh, the white connector is positive, black one is negative. So what appears to happen is, this is the wiring that would normally be on a Boom One bike, uh, or, or one that didn't have a bag speaker at all, or a bag uh, amp at all. Um, so this would normally have run over, it would have run down, it would come back up, and there would actually been a hole drilled in here for this grommet, and it would have plugged in under the tour pack. Uh, for whatever reason, it looks like Harley just decided to use the same harnessing on both. So we've got a tremendous amount of extra wiring in this fairing, in this uh, bag lid. Let's see if I can get this 
zip tie up here. I find that this little plastic webbing inside here is really good to zip tie around secure wires. When you're done, everything's going to be hidden because it's underneath this piece of cloth that opens anyways. I want to make sure that we have all of these factory clips still holding the wire. It's supposed to come over right there, so there's where we're going to go ahead and zip tie it a few more times. If you don't get this right, your wire is constantly getting stuck in your hinge area. Every time you open your bag, you're going to be a little bit aggravated that you didn't take the time to do it the right way. And from the factory, this one was actually already doing that. And I discussed that with the owner, that the wiring was loose and hanging. Even though it's a pretty new bike, they just didn't do anything to secure any of this in here. I think anything worth doing is worth doing right. So we're going to take a few more steps. We're going to make it exactly like it should have been. So now as you see, once we're hooked with the cloth, you're going to open it up. None of that's going to be seen. So let's put those outer two screws in now. You'll also see that there's a little Velcro part right here under the lid that should grab this and make sure that it doesn't get caught in the hinge as you open and close. So there you go. We've got a really good looking wiring set up. Cloth is back installed. Everything is like it should be. And all we're going to do is replicate this again on the other side. So when we come back, we'll put the seat on, we'll put the fairing back together, and we'll take a listen to it. All right, so, you know, earlier in the video, we put the amp up front. We used our plug-and-play harnessing. It all plugged in. There's one more step to this on the HD Audio by Rockford, and that's going to be we're going to take out the Rockford Fosgate amplifier. So in the back, you're going to see there's a cover. It's got two, uh, it looks like they're 530 seconds Allen head screws in the top of it. Let's remove those. All right, so once we have those removed, we've got a cover here that we can remove and take out. That's gonna expose our amplifier. So on this amp, if we'll just lean it forward and kind of pull upward, you'll expose the wiring that's on the bottom of it. Let's see if I can get it unplugged here. All right, so here is our Rockford Fosgate amplifier, and it says right on the back of it, it is a 400 watt amp. So we don't have to do any testing to try to verify what they think the size is. So that's 100 watts more than the Boom Stage 2 amps. But keep in mind, if you had a four speaker Boom Stage 2, you would actually add two 300 watt amps. So they've went from 600 watts down to 400 watts on their four speaker system. Um, and with the harnessing that we've developed and built here at Volunteer Audio, it is as simple as taking this one plug, plugging it in, simply snaps into the plug where the amp used to be, and we are done. So now at this point, you can take this cover and you can reinstall it over this wiring. And what I do in that case is I just use two uh, plastic push clips to clip in here, and then our cover's back in, the back of our bag is still clean, it still looks good. And so I'll get a couple of those, stick those in. So your other option would be remove the cover that you see here. Go ahead and remove the bracket behind it and just take it out. But if you do that, you're gonna have some wiring that's just exposed in the bag. So I would just take two plastic push clips Put that back on and uh, 
I think it looks great, and that was super easy. So if you just saw two Allen heads removed, amp comes out, plug our one plug in in. We're only going to send you the one plug if you do the Rockford uh, HD audio by Rockford. So you're not going to have to try to figure out which one to do, and it is really that easy. So both bags are done. Lids are modified for 6x9, 6x9 are installed. Our amp is now bypassed. Next step, we're going to flash the radio. So to do that, all I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen up this bag and I'm going to lean it out just enough that we can take off our side cover and we're going to get our computer out and get us connected up. All right, so I wanted to show you this part because sometimes it confuses people just slightly. Where do I plug in the programmer to flash my radio? So right underneath the side cover on the back where your fuse panel is, uh, is where that diagnostic port is. If it's a 14 to 20 model, it's going to be a gray connector right here at the bottom of the box. Uh, on a 21 and newer, it's going to be red. Now, in the case of this CVO, he's already got this really nice iRide system from Thundermax, and it does automatic air leveling based on speed. So it changes his ride height and it does all this cool stuff. So this port's being used currently. Uh, factory, it is literally plugged into the bottom right there. So if you see that red port on the bottom, it's a 21 or newer, and you have to use the red connector to hook to it. Now, if it was a 20 or older, or 14 to 20, it's going to be a gray connector in the same location. So we're going to flash it, and then we're going to make sure and plug it back up so this air ride still works properly. All right, so I'm going to go over how to flash the audio system on the motorcycle a little bit more in depth. Now, I've got it plugged into the data port we just showed you. I've got the ignition on on the motorcycle. And if you're just doing this and you've rented the tool from us, what you're going to do is you're going to go to technoresearch.info and you're going to download their software. So there, once you get that downloaded, you're going to have what we're looking at right here on screen. So at that point, we want you to connect to the bike connect to the computer, and do not disconnect it once you've launched the software. What we send you is a one-time use license. If you don't flash the bike, but you connect to it and disconnect, that license isn't any good anymore and we've got to get another one. So when you connect, let's make sure we finish the process. If you have any questions about it, call us. Don't disconnect till we've talked and we've went over it. So in the last video, I showed you how that on the HD audio by Rockford, that the EQ definitely was not flat. I also showed you uh, that they change that EQ when the engine is running. So when we do the flash we're fixing to do, we're doing four things. We're correcting that EQ and we're making it as flat as any factory Harley EQ is by using a Boom One flash. Specifically, we're doing a six speaker, two amp. Some people tell you eight speaker, two amp. They're so similar, I don't think it really matters, but we set all of our amp gains on all of our kits for the six speaker, two amp flash from Harley. So it's gonna do four things though. It fixes that EQ, makes it pretty flat, makes it where the EQ doesn't change when the engine's running. It turns on the rear speakers at the same time so we actually have rear speaker output of the radio to feed into our amplifier. Now you're not gonna have fade, but the output's there so we're feeding a stronger signal into the amp. It's also going to actually attenuate the radio down. So when you're hooking an amp up high level in, that's how Precision Power does it with their plug and play harnessing. That's how uh, Volunteer Audio builds the Hertz amps that we build with our own plug and play harnessing. And that's how many, many other companies, that's how Rockford does it, that's how Arc Audio does it, that's how Sounds does it. Just about everybody with any sense is running high level into their amplifiers on a Harley. We get less floor noise, we get less uh, noise that's from LED lights and uh, electrical noise in the bike by going high level. It's also a more secure connection. We don't have to worry about it coming loose later on like an RCA cable. But anyways, back to this. So it's gonna attenuate that level of the radio down to make almost all the amplifiers, especially all the ones we use, happy with the amount of input voltage. So we're not overdriving the input, which gives us really clean output. But we're still giving it way more signal than RCA cables, so we're not having to nearly gain the amp up as much, which is where we lose a lot of that noise. All right, so I've got my computer up. I'm gonna click our diagnostic tab here. You do have to have a PC and it has to have internet connection. We're gonna go in here, we're gonna say accept. So we just hit the Centurion. Now I've got a little bit of a USB issue with my computer. The one we send you is brand new. Uh, mine has been through a lot. I've actually ran over it with a few things and I think I need to get a new cable. So let's see if I can get this to work. It just told me my USB wasn't connected. Let me try that again.
There we go. So I've got to accept here. And let's see if it finds my bike this time. All right, so it did. So we're gonna stay on the default setting. Now you're gonna see a lot of brands here. Uh, here's J&M, Kicker, Rockford Sounds, Wild Boar, uh, DD Audio, American Hard Bags. Now I've spoke to the people at uh, Techno Research about this before. Every single one of those is just a factory Harley Flash that when you pick that name, it picks the one they want you to use. So what we're gonna tell you to do is go right on down here to default, which are the factory Harley Flashes. Now, and, and let me make sure you know this because I don't want this to get confusing. The Harley dealer cannot use these flashes on your bike. One of the deals they had when Rockford did the HD audio by Rockford was that they locked all the dealership computers to where they won't flash your radio unless it sees the Rockford amp or a boom amp on the data lines. So we're wanting to do a boom flash. They can't see the boom amp, their computer won't work. So techno research really is the only way to do this. So I'm gonna select six speaker, upper, lower, fairing, and saddlebag, two amp flash. I'm gonna click this hand here. It says it's connecting. You're gonna see up here that it's gonna give us a little message here in a minute. Just be patient. So it says setting. And when it says pass, we're gonna be done. All right, so we had a cable issue. Uh, it happens sometimes. We just went to a shorter one. And I wanna show you how this process works. So again, six speaker, upper fairing, lower fairing, saddlebag, two amp flash. We're gonna press this little hand on the screen. Once we do that, it's gonna say that it's connecting or setting, and then it's gonna say pass once it's done. So let's watch it go through the process. Again, don't disconnect your computer from your bike till you're done with the process and you see that it says it's passed. And you're gonna see in large red letters, it says right on the screen, do not flash boom audio stage two systems. The reason it says that is if you have a boom audio stage two system and you flash it to anything else, your amps are no longer gonna work and you'll have to take it back to the dealer to flash it back to Boom 2 to make the amps work. If you're replacing those amps, do not worry about what it says. It doesn't, it does not matter to you because we're normally doing a full system upgrade and we're no longer using those amps anyways. All right, so once it's passed, you're gonna turn your ignition off and you're gonna wait 13 seconds. It's gonna tell you this on the screen, it says wait 13 seconds. So once you've done that, then you're going to hit okay and we're gonna to go to the next step. I'm gonna show you how to turn on your Apple CarPlay because while you've got the computer connected, why not go ahead and turn on an option you probably didn't already have. All right, so it's been roughly 13 seconds. I'm gonna hit okay. I'm now gonna turn our ignition back on. And we're gonna go up here to the top where it says speaker configurator. And we're gonna click that and we're gonna go to audio outputs and nav, enable, disable. I'm gonna click the Bluetooth phone WIM CarPlay icon. I'm gonna click WIM, and then I'm gonna click Enable. And I'm gonna hit OK. Now you're gonna see it say Setting, and once it says Pass, uh, the Apple CarPlay is gonna be active. This is way less expensive than buying a WIM, paying the Harley dealer to install it, and then having to connect headsets to it to make your CarPlay work. Uh, it's actually free if you're already doing your audio system to do it at the same time. Uh, internet connection not detected. So let's see what's going on with our internet. For whatever reason, it lost. All right, so we're connected. Let's try this again. All right, WIM, enable. All right, so our internet just dropped out. We got reconnected. And somehow or another, hit the wrong screen here. Let's wait now and see if it says setting and then pass. So you do have to have internet. We're a long ways from our router. So sometimes it cuts out on us. All right, 
So it passed, so the same thing. We're gonna cut the ignition off for 13 seconds. Then we're gonna turn the ignition back on and then we're done. We can just unhook our computer and put all of this back up. So we're gonna do that here in just a minute. We'll get back together and we'll put the fairing on and then we'll put the seat on and we'll take a listen. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put our seat back on before we move up to the fairing. I'd rather put this under so that the bolt's not actually on the strap. There we go. I'm telling you, if you watch to the end of this video, it's well worth it. I already fired it up and listened to the system, but I want you to hear it too. It is remarkable how big a difference we've got from that factory HD by Rockford system and our new upgraded system. This is the first video we've made where we've used that new precision power 800 watt amp. And so far it is very impressive. seats on let's move up to the front all right so i put the headlight back in when you weren't here sorry but i'm gonna move on to putting the fairing on i think you can put the four bolts back in for the headlight snap your wiring back in where it went but we're gonna move on all right so i'm just gonna stick the fairing on and just like i told you when we took it off i'm gonna be putting the uh the bolts in at the speaker pods first. I do that because I can stand here and put some pressure on it. And once I get those in, it can't fall off. So everything else is really easy to do once these are in. So that other one's in, so we don't have to worry about it falling off. So I can come up here and put this one in. So I'm getting pretty excited about this build. While we weren't filming, I did some listening to it because it, it plays now. We're done. You know, we hooked everything up. And it sounds pretty darn amazing. Uh, I think our normal systems definitely have a wow factor to them when you listen to them. But this one's got more of an oh wow to it. This new precision power amp has added quite a bit of power and you can really hear it in the bass. Uh, and I'm excited for a customer to show up tomorrow. And when he picks it up, we're gonna do a little video with him and we'll go out and do a walk away with it as well. Cause I want his opinion. Hopefully he'll be willing to share it with us on, on video. That way you can see what he thinks about his bike after it's done. All right, so I put those two bolts in. Now our fairing is all in place. Um, what we've got to do is we've got to put our side bolts in at our marker lights. So I'll go and grab what we need and put those in. There's one on each side. I'm going to put the two bolts in. I think you remember us doing this on the front side, one on each side at the bottom. now you have your this front portion that we snapped off earlier quite often when you go to take this loose you're going to see these little rubber parts move in behind this piece of black trim if that has happened you want to go ahead and grab them and pull them out before you try to feed this back in so just make sure all those are lined up and everything's back in where it goes everything's going to fit much better if you do Yeah. All right, always be very, very careful with these 
bolts to go around the front of the fairing. You want to get them started exactly straight because these are little brass inserts and they're easy to start wrong and they're easy to mess up. So don't ever put a lot of pressure on them till you make sure they go in just really easy. If they bind up, take them out, look in the hole, make sure you're straight and try again. Go ahead and set the windshield in behind it. And this just kind of holds it for me while I get the get the bolts in, and we'll move to the other side. So we've got those in. Only thing left is to come around. We'll snap our speaker grills back on. This one still has the HD audio by Rockford grills. We're going to work on possibly doing something to try to get a Hertz logo on it. I may need to get out a 3D printer, maybe a laser engraver, see if we can make something at a later date. But we've got a customer picking up tomorrow. He's moving to Maine. So he's normally about two hours from us over toward Nashville, Tennessee. And he told me, he said, I want you to do the bike. And if you don't get to it before I move, I'm going to come back and have you do it. And I just couldn't have him go from Maine all the way to here. So while he was closed, we're going to go ahead and get it knocked out. But he'll be here tomorrow to pick it up. And uh, I'll take some measurements, hopefully get something for him logo-wise later that I can just send to him. We can do that a little bit more remotely. We just don't have enough time. Uh, super excited about it. I hope you can hear it here in a minute. How much clearer. It's always clear, but let me get the word right. It's got really good bass response. And I'm gonna play a couple new songs we haven't played before for you. They're still copyright free, uh, but a little bit different. We're gonna change it up. I'll let you hear, hopefully the bass response will get out of the system with this slightly larger amp. I mean, I say slightly, but it's 200 more watts and it's quite a bit more on the bass end. Uh, I had a guy come today, he listened to it. He thought it was so awesome. We're doing a, a Street Glide ST for him and we'll do a walkway on it tomorrow too. We'll post a video on it. Uh, but he listened to it and said, this is way more than I need. Let's just do the Hertz amp. So, uh, I, you know, it's rare that we find a Harley guy that has more than he needs of anything. So it's pretty amazing that he thought that much of this system. Um, but come around the other side, we'll snap the grills on and we'll listen to it. All right. All right, so we're just going to snap our grills in. When you're doing a road glide, you have this ear that just feeds underneath. It's going to feed inside the fairing. And then two little clips. These two clips right here just snap in place. So, fish that little ear in, line up your clips, and then just push. That easy, our grills are back in. So, let's get this thing fired up and take a listen. So, it's time. We're done. I'm going to let you hear it. Uh, I hope, I really hope I can get the, the owner on film tomorrow because I want to see his face the first time he hears it. I want it that you used to see that response. You can't make up a face the first time you hear something that sounds as good as this does. So I'm gonna play two new songs. Um, I'm actually gonna back up from it some because I think the speakers are so loud, they're kind of blowing the mic out and they're making it really hard for you to hear it. Even though we've bought really good mics, uh, there's only so much they can handle before they start to clip. So here it goes. Let's start it up and I'm gonna back up from it a little bit. <laughs>
All right, so super loud. <laughs> I think it's funny, we had a guy the other day post on one of our videos. I'm not gonna mention who he is. He's got a shop uh, across the country. But he made a comment, he said, I can, I can tune a bike with my ear better than you can using the proper tools, which was just crazy to begin with. It's like telling a carpenter or a carpenter telling you he can build your house better without a tape measure than you can with. Uh, I think the, the fact is most time we use tools to set this. This is so loud, your ears cannot comprehend how loud it is when you're in front of it. They crackle, they break up as you get closer to them. I don't know how you could possibly use your ears to tune this system. And every time I build a loud bike like this, my ears get a little worse and a little harder for me to be able to do that. Uh, but we're actually really proud that we use tools to set it right. And it sounds so awesome and so clean. I'm gonna go to another one that's got a little bit more bass and I hope you can really hear this. So here we go. So I had to walk away from it. I'm hoping it cleared up a little bit because it's definitely distorted. I'm watching Eric's face through, the, through his headphones look at me like, wow, this is, this is really not sounding great through these headphones right now. So that's all I've got for you this evening. Tomorrow morning, the owner's going to get here. I'm going to shoot a little video with him too. We'll, we'll add it to this and then we'll do a walk away. I hope you get some enjoyment out of it. But most of all, I want you to know uh, we try really hard here at Volunteer Audio to build amazing systems, and we try to build them really, really easy for you to do it yourself. And I hope through this video, showing you step-by-step -step every process, that we've encouraged you to take on something like this. And if you choose to buy a system from us, we really, really appreciate it. But understand, we're going to do all the labor hours and the work ahead of time. You don't see that on video when we do all the research, when we pin out and we make plug and play connectors before anybody else makes it. When we take our DD1 and our, our crossover calibrator and we perfectly set your amplifier here so that when you get it, you simply have to run the wires, mount the amp, plug everything in, and when you're done, it sounds amazing. So I hope we've encouraged you to do that. If this is more than you think, so you've watched it on, you go, I'm not doing that. I've got way too much money in my bike and I know my limitations and I want you to do it. Just reach out to me. We'd love to have you here. We're blessed to be in Oliver Springs, Tennessee. We're right outside of the Great Smoky Mountains. Uh, we're about a 45-minute ride from Maryville, which is where uh, the Foothills Parkway starts. We're probably an hour or a little more from Gatlinburg area. So you can ride up through the Smokies. You can go to the Devil's Triangle. Uh, that's actually on the other side of Windrock, really close to us, where Brushy Mountain Penitentiary is. You can go there and eat and tour the prison. Or go ahead and go up and ride the dragon. But just letting you know, if you do decide you want to come have us do it, even if you live a long ways away, we got people here every week traveling out of state. They stay in a hotel. We knock out their bike really, really quickly so they still have the rest of their trip to go have a good time and ride and enjoy their new audio system. So again, hope I encourage you to do it yourself. If not, please contact me. We'd love to meet you. We'd love to do the system for you. Uh, all these packages are on volunteeraudio.com. If you want to see this exact package, just go to the description in this YouTube video and there'll be a link there. So you just click it, it'll take you straight to it. We've got some really cool things we've built in the website. We're launching some amp builders, some package builders where you select your speaker, select your amp. It builds it and shows you the price right as you go. And everything about that, we have pre-selected to work together. So there's a lot of if-then statements that when you pick something, we won't let you pick the wrong parts to go with it. So some really cool things at Volunteer Audio that we've come up with uh, that I'm really proud of and I hope you go on our website and you check out. Please like this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and do a Facebook post, do something and share it because it's awesome and I really want you uh, to let your friends see it. I love these bikes. This one is, is special. This bronze armor with this nice patina on this exhaust. It's just very, very classy and this engine sounds amazing and now his audio is as nice as the rest of the bike. Thank you for watching. As always, God bless, and I hope you have a good evening.